So let's take a look at the stories dominating uh, the media around the world. Here in the UK, obviously that debate that we've just mentioned is dominating the very front pages. This is the Financial Times, which is looking, looking specifically at the diplomatic row between the US and UK after Donald Trump lambasted Theresa May and Britain's ambassador to the US, Kim Darroch, via Twitter. This is a big part of the debate last night on the television. The Times is looking at that, the focus on reaction of the two Tory rivals to those comments by uh, President Trump. Also, if we stay with UK politics, The Guardian reports that, that MPs have voted astoundingly to extend same-sex marriage and access to abortion in Northern Ireland, bringing it in line with the rest of the United Kingdom. The Metro asks, would you want Alexa to do the job of the GP as Amazon and the NHS form a partnership aimed at easing pressure on doctors and hospitals? The BBC website reports on the ethnicity pay gap and the fact that Chinese and Indian ethnic group workers are the biggest earners currently in the UK. And then finally, The Independent has a picture of a rather forlorn Johanna Conta taken just before a row with a reporter whom she deemed patronising during a press conference. Well, Cornelia is back, as promised, so let's dig deep and have a look at those stories in a bit more detail. Cornelia, let's get stuck in. So we start with Financial Times front page. It's headline, Hunt hits back after Trump calls envoy pompous and may foolish. What do you make of this diplomatic row that's emerging well, between the US and the UK? It's incredibly unfortunate. And I would say, OK, um, you know, um, Hunt said, well, it, it was wrong. Yes, it was wrong. I would have probably chosen a different language. I would probably have said something like it was unfortunate. But if you look at it, um, it's, it's very this, this, this document that, 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 that this uh, should never have been leaked, you know, where the, where, the, where the UK ambassador said what he, how he looked at the Trump administration and its, its, its many fallacies. Um, and, and, and that's, really, that's really where the problem lies. But then the UK must not be pushed by a, by a foreign president as to who the ambassador should be, who the ambassador shouldn't be. So it's, it's a very, very tricky situation. It's an extremely difficult uh, one to resolve. Uh, it, it, you know, the diplomacy that needs to go on between the US and UK going forward. I mean, and we look at the tweet that's on the Financial that's Times. Just... I mean, there were many tweets about Theresa May, about Kim de Rock, but this one says the wacky ambassador the UK foisted upon the United States is not someone we're thrilled with a very well, stupid guy. I don't know the ambassador, but have been told he's a pompous fool. Well, that's you know, one of the tweets. The, the, that's one of the tweets. And the thing is, it, he has no voice on, he has no say as to who the ambassador will be. He can let him be the ambassador. You know, ambassadors have to get accredited with the, with, with, with the governments. But, but he has no... Last time I checked, our sovereign was the Queen and not Donald Trump. Um, the Financial Times article as well talks about the fact that uh, Sir Kim withdrew yesterday from a planned yeah. meeting at the yeah. White House. That was going to be between uh, the, the International Trade Secretary, Secretary and, Liam and Ivanka Fox. Trump. And, and that is, and I don't know what, whether he was right to do that or not right to do that. Wh where it becomes very tricky is how much will it impede the ambassador's ability to do his job? Because, as you know, he had been disinvited from a from a dinner in, in honour of the image of Qatar um, so here he recused himself so that that is where it gets tricky and also the Financial Times you know points out and others including uh, Ian Watson our sort of correspondent that looks at this issue of Brexit is the fact that as the UK you know pivots away from Europe by nature it is going to pivot more in the direction of the United well, States especially when it comes to a future trade deal absolutely but we have that special relationship we've always had that special relationship but I think when you talk to senior um, American diplomats and that's I'm talking pre-Trump era, senior American diplomats, they said, yes, we have a special relationship with the UK, but really when we look at, at, at Europe, we look at Germany because it's the biggest economy. So we make a little bit more of how special the relationship between the two of us is, I think, than the US does. The Times is looking at the live television debate, which you and I have already discussed, but it really does focus in on the fact that um, Johnson 
raises pressure on the besieged ambassador. Um, he, and and that's he, because the Times points out the fact that he would not say he, he or would, not he would whether say, he would keep him on. He would not say anything. Hunt was very clear he will keep him on for the duration. And it, the, the Times also says, you know, one of the senior advisers to Mr. Johnson said, we don't want to put the whole special relationship on it. And then you had Wilbur Ross, um, the, 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 the trade um, uh, uh, US Commerce Secretary saying um, that it was um, madness to keep a diplomat that, that lost his access in, in place. So um, the way I read the tea leaves, I listened very carefully, is that I don't think Johnson would probably keep him on the, in, in, in his post because he would, he would be pragmatic and say, we need to make the special relationship work. But, but then again, this is, this is bigger than just the UK and the US. This is really, you know, this goes about how much does a country want to let itself be bullied or, or, or well, by Times, a foreign leader? Yeah, the Times does point out that of the two that were in this debate last night, you know, Mr Johnson was the one that only expressed only mild criticism of some of Trump's uh, rhetoric, some of those tweets, some of those comments. But it's not just comments about the ambassador, comments about, about the, the our Prime current Prime Minister, yeah. Theresa and, May. And, 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 you know, but, but you see the thing is Johnson, what Johnson said in the debate was, well, you know, I always disagreed with May on the Brexit deal, so I'm, I'm sort of erring on the side of where Trump stands. But again, this is bigger than the Brexit deal. This is, the U, this is defending the realm, so to speak. Now let's talk about The Guardian and uh, this is a rare headline because, you know, recently, in recent months, weeks and you could even argue years, it's been all about issues that are pulling apart the United Kingdom. But actually, uh, this story looks at something that's bringing the United Kingdom together. MPs voting resoundingly in Northern Ireland to extend same-sex marriage and access to abortion in Northern Ireland to bring it into line with the rest of Britain? Well, yes, MPs, um, not in Northern MPs here, yeah. voting, um, voting to that. And the interesting thing is, which is obviously I'm, I'm very much in favour of that, but the interesting thing is it was a free vote. So the parties didn't instruct, it, there was no whip, nobody told anybody how to vote. And it was, it was a resounding yes, which is great. We are, we, are, we are becoming a very tolerant society and that is good. But there is a, but, there is a constitutional um, an issue you in that because really it should have been with, with the devolved powers that we have. There's a thing that that, that you know, Stormont yes. should have done something, but Stormont was out of act, out of action for 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 I mean, two years now. I mean, changes can only be made by the devolved Northern Ireland yeah. Irish government yeah. um, going forward, but still. Well, it's 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 a gr it's great news. Good to see some unity oh, it's within wonderful. Westminster. It's good to see unity within Westminster, and um, we now need to deal with the with the constitutional fallout. Just a small matter. Let's have a look at Alexa. Do the job of my GP. This is the NHS. As a story I've already mentioned, we've got it on BBC News as well. Um, it's uh, the NHS is allowing Amazon Assistant Voice Assistant Alexa to give. Uh, advice. This is the idea of the Health Secretary uh, Matt Hancock's long-term plan for the NHS. Well, I think this is very interesting, and I have three things to say to this, essentially. I mean, on, on, it shows how, just how important AI is becoming, and AI is not just the robots that deal with um, inter artificial intelligence. It's not just the robots that are dealing with the, in, in, in warehouses and, and, and packing up books or things we buy. It's, um, it's, it's, you know, it's increasingly lawyers, doctors, and so on, so that's that. Then we have, obviously, a data security issue as well that we one needs to look into as data protection and then there is the thing is but in the end where I have a question is will it be sometimes you need the judgment of a human being you know your symptoms may be X and it may all look so but the doctor a qualified doctor looking at you can say yeah your symptoms are X but it is Y so I'm like are we putting people at risk yeah, there's so many, many questions about yeah. this, and data security is, is a huge one. As, as you say, it's, it's often people come to the doctor with a headache, but actually there's a lot more yeah, exactly. going on. Um, we, we've heard from some viewers on this. So Balaji, who watches us in India, says AI is knowledge-based, so it's obvious for doctors, uh, lawyers, to make use of it. Trade-offs, though, are privacy and data-driven that should uh, be prioritised for future technologies. Uh, there's also the issue, of course, of increasing in efficiency for the NHS which is, which is which a lot would of this be a great is to thing. do and 
with Relieving saving money. GPs, because GPs are just, they have an enormous burden. Um, Keith says, I think this is a crazy idea. We already have the help of the, the helpline 111. This looks like more austerity cuts. Funny, I thought we were over austerity. Perhaps we're not. <laughs> right, let's, one <laughs> final word. Johanna Conter, uh, fighting back in the press conference. She, she said that the, the questioning she was uh, receiving from some of the journalists there after her defeat at Wimbledon was patronising. Well, I think there, there, there may be an element of that. And I was thinking, if she had been a man, would she have been asked the same way? Did you, were you able to hold up under pressure or not? But then, if she had been a man and she had been asked, would you have been able to, to hold up? A, a bloke would probably just say, well, go away. Interesting, but I thought it's good for her. It's, it's good Thanks, for her. Thanks, Cornelia. Yeah. And thank you, too, for your company on The Briefing. Have a really good day. Bye-bye.